Hey guys, it's Matt. Welcome to Speed Tutor, and I wanted to give you the lowdown of one of Unity's newest blog posts, and it's a look at Unity and its future, and specifically the future of games and what you can expect from the team themselves. They will be creating new blog posts and new information, and all the things coming up with more details of everything in the future. But this is the first post that I will condense through for you guys. Be sure to check out all the links down below for all the savings in game dev and all the massive humble bundles to save thousands of dollars. This blog post is called The Game's Focus and What's Next by Ralph Hewitt. And Ralph's been working at Unity for over 11 years and he's overseen development of the engine, the editor, and everything to do with games. But fast forward to now, and it's got millions and millions of creators across all platforms and across the world. And he does say, that the industry has gone beyond games and Unity can be used to create real-time interactive content across so many disciplines. But what I wanted to make clear is games have always been the heart of what Unity does and it will remain the heart of what they do. But Unity will have still a core vision to enable all creators to make incredibly awesome work. Ralph mentions that they're still working on substantial improvements, making it more efficient to be able to get Unity to ship production ready features and improvements that matter the most, empowering you to build more immersive and beautiful experiences, providing you with better performance in the editor and at runtime on target platforms. And the top requests from the community is what they've set their main priorities on, a stable and fast unified platform and core for be able to for creation, rendering at scale, which scales to your game, tools to create and operate multiplayer games, large worlds and rich environments, visual scripting and codeless creation tools, the ability to reach players over multiple platforms and different form factors, improved DevOps, clarity and community feedback on exactly what is shaping the development. Because as you know, with a lot of news recently, it's taken a back seat in terms of there's been very misconstrued communication and bad PR things have come out. So it's important for that to be improved. And about 30% of all projects created in Unity now use the universal render pipeline, including big titles like Of Dusk Falls and Lost in Random. And the idea is to get the universal render pipeline to be the first choice for everyone. And that goes from a road of 30% to 100% with more features that they'll add. What's next? And through 2023, one big improvement that we're working on is the ability to easily author text-based shaders. And the big ask from the community, which is block shaders, which is a new streamlined workflow, which provides surface shader support for scriptable render pipelines. They have heard that when scaling games from the highest end GPUs to the lowest is a challenge. And one of the priorities for 2023 is to provide unified workflows and settings across all rendering pipelines to be able to host both URP and HDRP in the same project. So you can actually switch between whatever type of hardware that you're looking to cater for. And we're working on a solution to reduce the cost of creating content for different architectures and platforms by enabling you as an author to create a content on a single set of properties. Ultimately, our goal for URP is to make it the most performant renderer on all the platforms we support. And with full functional parity with the built-in render pipeline and detailed documentation, stay tuned for the upcoming blog post in the series about graphics, which will provide more information and plans for rendering, which you can always find more information about in the roadmap that they provide. And now specifically talking about resources, the community is always asking for more advanced technical content. And in the past year, they've produced a collection of free instructional eBooks for experienced users, including the introduction to the universal render pipeline and a definition to lighting in the high definition render pipeline. And then Ralph wanted to go on about running code and writing it and the many hours that people spend writing code, debugging, profile, iterating should go as smoothly as possible. We're working hard to stave off the time spent between switching from the editor to the IDE, to the game view and the play mode. So how are they gonna do this? And since 2021, 
LTS, they've been optimizing the asset import sequences, and this has been made three to four times faster, while project import times are 8.7% faster compared to 2020 LTS. And they've improved the LC2 CPP build times by about 20% since the LTS release and by 40% since 2019. And the memory profile will soon be production ready and adds detailed profiling for both user and engine code, as well as faster location of memory use. Specifically looking at what's next ahead for 2023 and 24, so they'll move both the editor and the runtime to Microsoft's core CLR, thereby providing the best possible .NET experience while enabling the latest C Sharp 10 features and will also bring a high performance just-in-time compiler, server-ready garbage collector, more robust debugging and access to ubiquitous tooling for testing, profiling and diagnostics and they'll be sharing a blog post specifically about performance in a few weeks. And Ralph goes on to mention that there is some in-depth projects and other things that they have shared, which is ultimate guides to profiling, mobile games, and console development, which you can find in the blog post too. The UI toolkit is a unified collection of features, resources, tools for building adaptive UIs for a wide range of game applications or editor extension. Since the introduction of UI Builder and runtime support for UI toolkit in 2021.2, they've released 30 bug fixes, performance improvements based on feedback. They'll be shipping the UI toolkit as a production ready for making editor UIs and will be making it recommended solution for the Unity editor extension specifically. And in 2023, they'll be focusing on the foundational improvements to increase the speed of building UIs and making it more extendable and faster. I'm particularly excited about their new data binding workflows, which is much more designer friendly with a visual workflow for binding data to UI, which can you always find in the UI toolkit and the production roadmap for this as well. Up next is going to be this talk from the graphics team, which will outline key improvements and plans to rendering pipelines with details about planned and delivery in the future. That the feedback from the community is the best thing that they can ever have because it helps shape that the way that the engine goes. So be sure to comment down below if you've got any thoughts on this and I will leave all the links in the description so you can check a look at this blog and all of the specific links that they provide with all the details shown. So be sure to come and check out my Patreon to get access to over 160 different scripts, assets and projects you cannot find anywhere else. Come and check out my great assets on the Unity store and on my website for massive discounts. Sign up for the newsletter to always be kept up to date to everything that's going on. But a big thank you to all my patrons, including Peter Steiner, Hoagland Nigan, Raheem Whitaker, Jean Pommy, Manos Barakas, Terence Conrad, Walter Dunson, Joseph Newman, Rennie Leisure, Tofa James, Krishna Khalili, Benjamin Shankel, Alex Shen, Alyssa Faden, Daniel Getajank, Ishkoya Tokoya, Ron J, Hush, Thomas Marcelelli, and Nopakun Tefalayafit.